Hello photographers, direct support for these videos comes from sales of my video courses or the use of my affiliate links, all of which can be found down in the description. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your Canon R6 camera for video. And I wanna point out before we do this that video is a deep and complex thing. So what I'm giving you here is a base level of settings that you can work from to capture your video in the best quality possible for your needs. So the first thing you're going to need to do is turn on the camera and put the camera into the movie mode by switching the mode dial from whatever mode you're in to the little movie camera. What that's going to do is enable us to access the video specific menu options in the menu system. So this overheat control message will come up. You can just dismiss that with the OK button and then press the menu button on the back of the camera to enter your menu system. And the very first thing we want to change is the shooting mode. By default, it is set to auto and I like to use manual which gives us full manual control over all of the camera settings just like when taking photos. This includes ISO, aperture, shutter speed, metering mode, all of those different things are available to us when we enable manual video shooting. So I'm going to hit the set button to turn that on and then I'm going to go back into the menu system and we're going to take a look at the movie record quality. This is two different things that we're going to be setting here. We're gonna be setting the frame rate and the resolution of the video. So first, we're just going to talk about the resolution. The resolutions that you have available to you are 4K and HD video. So HD is your standard 1920 by 1080 video. And then 4K is 3840 by 2160, double the size of full HD. And you might be thinking, great, I wanna record 4K, but pause for just a moment and realize that 4K video files are big and you need the computing ability to manage and edit those video files. And if you don't have that, recording in 4K could actually cause more problems for you trying to use your video files. So consider that before you jump into recording 4K video. So we'll start from the top here. This is 4K at 59.94 frames per second. That's basically 60 frames per second. This is a higher frame rate. I don't recommend using unless you wanna do a little bit of slow-mo footage with this. And then you have 1920 by 1080, also at 60 frames per second. And then you can get 1920 by 1080 at 24. This one I wanna point out because 24 is the cinematic frame rate. If you want to have that movie look to your videos, that film look, then this is the frame rate that you want to choose, the 23.98, regardless of the resolution that you choose. Over here we have 4K at 30 frames per second. 30 frames per second is a standard recording frame rate. So if you're used to watching YouTube videos and you want your videos to look like a YouTube video, 30 frames per second or this 29.97 is perfect. Now take note, this is 4K at 30. You also have full HD at 30. And then finally here you have 4K at 24. So the ones that I would recommend choosing between are full HD at 30 or full HD at 24, unless you wanna record in 4K, then choose between 4K at 30 or 4K at 24. What I would recommend if you have no idea what to choose is full HD at 30, which is this one right here. So once you have that set, the next option is the high frame rate. By default, this is disabled. If you want to record slow-mo footage, then you would want to enable this. And this is a specific recording mode on the camera. So you enable this for slow-mo footage and then you disable it when you're done capturing that slow-mo footage. What this does is capture in 120 frames per second, which when slowed down to something like 30 or 24 frames per second is really beautiful slow-mo footage. So I'm going to leave this disabled, but I want you to know that this option is here for you. We're gonna exit out of this menu and we're gonna look at movie cropping, which I recommend you leave disabled because if you're gonna crop your video, you should crop it in your edit, not in camera. And then we have sound recording. Now by default, sound recording is set to auto, but this is something that you want to change from recording session to recording session because you want good quality audio. Now, what you have here is an auto option, or you have the option to set it to manual, or you can disable it and record no sound whatsoever. So auto is exactly what it sounds like. The camera decides for you. I prefer manual because it gives you control over the levels. 
Now if you look here you can see we have this audiograph that is bouncing up and down and it's hitting that zero and it's actually doing what's called peaking which is giving us those little red indicators at the end. That's bad. That means your audio is essentially going to be overexposed and it's going to sound terrible and you don't want that. And that's why you set your record level for every recording session and what you can do is hit the set button to enable the record level option and then you can turn that down until you have your audio levels jumping in between the minus 12 and the zero. You don't wanna see those red indicators like we saw up here. So we're gonna back it down. And if I back it down to around here, this looks like a good recording level for me, like right about here. Because as I get a little more volumatic, it goes up above the minus 12, but it stays in that general area. And again, this is something you wanna set every single time you record. So I'm gonna set this for now. And then we're gonna hit menu to exit out of here. So now we're gonna move over to page two and take a look at the ISO speed settings. By default, your camera is set to auto ISO. And if you want full manual control over your ISO, then you need to turn that off here in the menu system by pressing the set button and just setting it to ISO 100. You don't have to actually set your ISO here. You just need to take it off of auto to disable the auto ISO function. So I'm gonna hit the set button to enable that. And then you can look at your ISO speed range and your max for auto. So ISO speed range is the ISO availability you have when you are setting your ISO. Right now it is capped at 25,600. If you wanted access to any higher ISO settings, you would have to set those up in here. But the 25,600 is the maximum native ISO for video, so I recommend you leave it at that setting. If you wanted to go lower because you don't like shooting at higher ISOs, you're certainly welcome to do so. I myself would leave it set to the default. I'm gonna hit menu to exit out of that. And the next option is the max for auto ISO. If you choose to use auto ISO, which you may wanna do, in which case you would set this back to auto, if you do wanna use auto ISO, you can set the maximum ISO that the camera can choose. And again, I would leave this set to the maximum, 25,600, but if you prefer to choose lower ISOs, you're welcome to set a lower maximum ISO here. So now we're gonna go back out of here and we're gonna skip over everything else and go to seven. And here we wanna take a look at the shutter button function for movies. This is a nice little like quality of life feature, which allows you to use the shutter button to start and stop your video recordings. By default, this is not turned on. We wanna change fully press to start and stop movie recording. And now you can use your shutter button to do just that, start and stop your video recordings. Those are the menu settings that you should change in order to set yourself up for recording video. Once you've done that, while you're in your standard recording mode, you can press the quick menu button, which is this cue right here, to access your video controls. So here we have the mode. If you wanted to quickly change to auto recording where the camera sets your settings, you could. You can change your autofocus method. You can change the actual video quality or frame rate here. You can change your audio recording level here, which is nice because going into the menu is sometimes a little cumbersome. But once you've set it, you can quickly adjust your record level here by using the top dial on the camera to change the record level. And then here you have the volume. That actually indicates the headphone volume because you can use headphones to monitor the audio while you're recording right here. And you can change the volume of the headphones also by using this top control dial. And the last option to take a look at here is your digital image stabilization. This is a useful function to use if you're hand holding and recording video. Now, I wouldn't leave this enabled all the time and I would make sure this is turned off when you're using the camera on a tripod, but this is a useful function to use when you are shooting handheld. All right, so that's how you set up your Canon R6 for video. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. If you wanna do that YouTube bullshit to help me out, like, subscribe, whatever, that'd be great. But make sure you get out there and shoot some damn videos.